You know that you want your middle school students to read independently for enjoyment and to expand their horizons. But how do you make that happen in a way that doesn't drive you crazy and add additional work for you? Hi, I'm Mary Pat from Just Add Students. I'm so glad you're with me today so we can talk about something that's near and dear to my heart, which is helping our middle school students become independent readers. I've been a teacher all my adult life. I've taught fourth grade through college. I have my master's and my bachelor's both in English. So, you know, I love to read. I was that nerdy kid who had a book under her desk and was reading instead of paying attention in class. So I'm excited to share with you some ideas of how you can put together an independent reading program in your classroom that isn't going to add a lot of additional work for you. So let's get started. Today we're going to talk about the what and the why of independent reading. We're also going to talk about nine easy add-ins that you can think of as sprinkles for ice cream, things that you can add into your classroom to in include independent reading. Then we'll do some troubleshooting with what could possibly go wrong, and then next steps. So let's start out by just having a definition of what independent reading is is and it's basically allowing your students to choose what they want to read. Now some teachers will require students to read books that are only a hundred pages or a certain genre or they might limit what students can read as far as saying you can't read Captain Underpants or Witches by Roald Dahl. That is something that you have to decide as a, a teacher of how you want to handle those things. Personally, I feel like as adults, when we read for pleasure and we enjoy reading, we read whatever we want and we read from a wide variety of genres and types of texts. So I think personally, I feel like you should allow your students to read anything they like and you can give them some guidance, and we'll talk about that in a minute, about helping your students kind of expand their reading choices. But let's talk about why they should read. Now, this study was done in 1987, and I know it's old, but there's still some valuable information in this. The study discovered that students who read 20 minutes a day score in the 90th percentile in standardized tests. Okay, and here is something also very interesting. If you look at this and you see how many words these students are exposed to, almost 2 million words. So we know that the more words our students are exposed to, the better their vocabulary, comprehension, and the better their background knowledge is. So that's very, I think that's a really interesting statistic. Students who read five minutes a day score in the 50th percentile. And look at the difference in the words, that the, the number of words that they will be exposed to in a year. And then students who read just one minute a day scored in the 10th percentile. And they also have a greatly reduced number of words that they're exposed to. This is um, an interesting infographic to share with your parents and your students when you introduce independent reading. And I've included this infographic in the materials that you can download for this session. The one thing we don't want independent reading to be is a way to make more work for you. What I would like you to do is think of yourself as the guide. You're the guide who is leading your students to books that are going to work for them, that they are going to want to read. And so that's your job as the guide. Rather than taking on more assessments, let's plan on you being the guide to this independent reading program. First thing you want to do is you want to gather your own resources that are going to help you. And that may include your school librarian, a public librarian, access to books to build out your classroom library. So think about what your resources are. You also have resources in your team and in your school, other teachers who can help you, support you as you're trying to improve this independent reading for your students. Before you even start introducing independent reading, you want to make sure you have decided what your classroom routines and protocol 
are going to be. So how are your students going to settle in to read? Even if you have just squeezed out five precious moments of reading time, you want your students to be reading, not to be wandering around the room looking for their book. Set up those protocols and routines and practice them often. Remember, it will, your students will need to be reminded after a break. You're going to have to teach those routines over and over again, probably. And if you don't, this is something you'll be struggling with all year long. So make sure you have your routine set up at the beginning of the year that your student you can practice with your students. Today, we're going to talk about nine easy add-ins, and I've divided them into groups of three. So the first three are add-ins for getting excited. So that includes setting challenges, read-alouds, and book talks. So getting started is a great place to begin your independent reading challenge by setting a challenge for your students or helping them set goals. And we want to make sure that our students have reachable goals. As you're talking about challenges, you want to know what kind of reader your students are. In the materials for this class, you'll find a survey and start out the year by just surveying your students and finding out what do they like to read, what's easy, what's hard for reading for them, how many books did they read last year, what's their favorite book. So getting to know your students before they set up a challenge or you set up a challenge for your class is important. You also want to make sure that your goals fit your students. So it's a good idea to meet just quickly with your students individually and talk about what their goals are. You'll find that you have some students who are gung-ho and they want to read 100 books this year and others who will struggle just to read one a quarter. So make sure that you are making a goal that is reachable for all your students so they will all feel successful. Read alouds or another way to invite and excite your students about reading. You want to include tempting chapters and dramatic readings and a variety of genres. So in the materials for this class, I've listed 11 titles for read alouds and why your students may like them. If you love drama, and I think most teachers have a little dramatic streak, a read aloud is a lot of fun because you can do the voices, you can add emphasis, and with tempting chapters, that means you share the story, share a chapter or two, get your students interested in the book, and then say, okay, we're going to stop there. If you want to read it, this is how you can check this book out of our classroom library. Oftentimes, the very beginning portions of a book are the hardest for students to get into, and students may say something like, I didn't like that book, I couldn't get into it. But if you get them through that beginning part of the book, they will often pick up the book on their own because the most difficult part has been already, they've already got to know the character, they know the characters, and they're getting into the story. Another great idea for read alouds is to introduce your students to a series of books. Once the student has learned the characters in a series, like an Alex Ryder series that is really engaging and exciting and every chapter has a cliffhanger, once your students get interested in a book like that, they'll read the next book and the next book and the next book and making that threshold to reading the book initially lower and easier for them. Book talks are another great way to get your students excited about reading. And you can actually generate a great book buzz in your classroom with book talks. And you'll also get your speaking and listening skills. Your students will have an opportunity to practice those. You could do book talks once a quarter or once a semester. You definitely want to do them more than once. And um, an easy way for you to introduce book talks is for you to model them using the rubric. And one of the most fun ways to model them is to do a really, really bad book talk. So in other words, you're modeling what not to do with a book talk, and your students can use the rubric to score you. It's a lot of fun, and your students will love grading you, of course and turning the tables on the grading, but also you'll have a chance to show them what a bad book talk looks like 
And then you can also give a good book talk or find a book talk online. Scholastic has some book talks that you could download or show, share with your students as well. So the next three are easy add-ins. And the theme for these three is this won't hurt a bit. And it, the easy add-ins include easy to manage journals, graffiti wall, and keeping it fresh. Easy manage journals are creating accountability without making more work for you. You want your students to record their books and in the materials I've included a um, just a, a very simple log. You want your students to record what they're reading, but you also don't want to have it be something that you're dragging home to assess every single week. Allow your students to keep a simple journal Allow your students to abandon books. If they don't like the book, they should be able to abandon it just like we do. You might want to have some rules. You may say, um, we're going to have 100 minus your age. Those are the number of pages you need to read before you're allowed to abandon your book. And you can also have something simple like you want to check that they're reading and you want to make sure they're continuing to read. You can just have them open their journal or put their a record page on the top of their desk while they're reading or working independently and you can just walk around the room and check. There's a lot of trust that's got to be built into this. You're not trying to catch your students not reading. We want to celebrate them reading. You know, it's a little bit different. You also think, if you think about it, you probably have plenty of assessments in your other content area. So you, this doesn't necessarily need to be something that you assess. It can just be an add-on. When you create a graffiti wall by just putting up a a piece of butcher paper on your wall and putting a title on it of something like what to read next. Yay, you have a decoration in your classroom. And you also have an opportunity for your students to share with their peers. What should I read next? We know that students often value the opinions of their peers much more than they value ours. And so this is kind of a nice way for students to, again, create that book buzz and have books that they're sharing that they write on the graffiti wall. Now I want you to think like a grocery store and keeping it fresh. And what that means is think about the grocery store, how they make the candy at the end caps look so inviting or the produce so beautiful and fresh. And things are at eye level. The generic brands are way high or way low, but the premium brands are right at eye level for a reason. Look around the real estate in your classroom and think about how can I promote reading? Where can I display books? And keep your book displays fresh. If you want your students reading mysteries in October, put a mystery display up or wrap up books in brown paper bags and write on the front of them, do you like a mystery? Try me. Have a book tasting. Do some fun things with your book displays to keep your students interested and looking at your bookshelves or looking at a book display. If you want to keep it mixed up. Themes for the month work really well and um, make it uh, easy and tantalizing. We know that uh, cover art is just so beautiful now and book covers are so engaging. So we want to display those in a way so that students are going to pick up the book and want to read it. The last three uh, add-ins are themed Make It Easy to Succeed. So that includes taking a status of the class, bingo boards, and monthly challenges and premiums. Status of the class is really a fabulous way for you to get data that will help both you and your students understand what their reading habits are. So status of the class, and again, I have this sheet in the materials, and I also have a link to a video that explains it in much greater detail. But status of the class is an idea that came from Margaret Atwell, and you have a sheet of paper for each student in which you are going to very, very quickly at the beginning of class, just survey your students and find out what they're reading. So for example, Stu is reading Harry Potter on Monday, he's on page 20. 
On Tuesday, he's still reading Harry Potter and he's on page 60. On Wednesday, he's on page 100. On Thursday, he's on page 100. So what does this tell us? Think about the data that you can see and share with your students that show what their reading progress is. Students who are struggling to read, who are forgetting, chronically forgetting their book or starting a new book or abandoning books, this is a great opportunity for you to sit down with those students and say, how can I help you? How can I be that guide to help you become a better independent reader? I really encourage you to try status of the class. It only takes a couple of minutes at the beginning of class. Your students are settled, they're reading, and you can flip through a notebook and just take status. And once your students know what's happening, they'll know exactly what to do and what information you're asking for them. And then with both students who are doing really well and reading tremendously and students who are struggling and even the ones in between sharing this information with them on a regular basis is very empowering. Very empowering because they can see, yes, I am reading and yes, I am making progress and yes, I am moving toward my goal. Bingo boards or some people call them choice boards are a great way to keep your students interested and add some novelty into your reading program. You can have prizes, simple prizes that will help your students stay motivated and have the reading your reading program just stay again fresh and different. And the bingo boards can be very simple challenges, you know, a, something simple like read for 20 minutes today as to something like read a different genre historical fiction this month. A lot of fun ways to keep your students interested. Monthly challenges are also awesome. I mentioned before having like October be mystery month. And so your students can be exposed and challenged to read different genres. You can also connect their monthly challenges with their book club. So in October, their genre might be to read a mystery and maybe they're reading mysteries in their book clubs. You also want to have your students understand what's in it for me. Sometimes we've got to kind of dangle a little carrot in front of them. So if they have, if they um, accept the monthly challenge and they complete it and they're successful with it, simple prizes um, are great for keeping your students motivated. But what could possibly go wrong? First of all, don't be afraid to hit the reset button. If something is not working, don't keep doing it. What's the expression? Don't keep banging your head against the wall just because it feels good when you stop. Start over again. Nothing has to be for the whole year. You can tell your students, we're going to do this monthly challenge just this month. You may do it one month and you may say that didn't work for my students. Don't be afraid to hit the reset button. Some other common problems you might have are, my students aren't reading. You want your students to be reading, obviously, for independent reading. So try really hard to squeeze five minutes into your class day to give your students an opportunity to have time in school to read, where they're actually just sitting down and that's what they're doing. Now, another thing you want to do is include your uh, team with this and so that your team will know when there's study hall, when there's downtime, if they finish their homework early or if they're finished with class early or if they have a substitute teacher, your students should always have a book with them. So have your team help you with this, this to encourage your students to always be ready to read. They forget their books. This happens all the time. I forgot my book in my locker. I forgot got my book at home. I lost it. So it help, it's helpful when you identify students who are chronic forgetters to have an extra copy of the book simply in your classroom that they keep in your classroom or have, if it's not the book that they're reading at home, like let's say they're reading a different book at home, have a book in your classroom that they can be reading in your classroom. It's not ideal but they will be reading consistently when they're in your classroom during that pocket of time, however long it is that you have them independently reading. 
they're reading books that are below their level. Another opportunity for you to conference with your students, asking them why, making sure that you know where they should be reading, maybe do a reading assessment with them, and encouraging them to try reading something else something else that they will be feel successful reading. Getting to know what your students are interested in reading is so helpful when you want them to read something else. So asking them, uh, questioning, talking about the books that they're reading. Additionally, if you're reading what they're reading, it's also really helpful because you will know, oh, if you like this, you might like that. It's very helpful for you to be reading the things that they are reading. They tell me that they don't have time. You are going to hear this all the time. And one thing you can do with this is have your students do a time audit, just a simple time audit that they do throughout the week where they actually record what they do um, every hour. And we oftentimes, when we do a time audit, if you've ever done yourself, you realize, oh gosh, you know, I do spend an awful lot of time scrolling through Instagram or, oh, I was playing video games for an hour yesterday. Even if you're asking your students 20 minutes, they oftentimes can find, you don't have to have 20 uninterrupted minutes. You can read for 10 minutes while you're going to soccer practice or while you're waiting for the bus. So we wanna encourage our students to look at their time and their time management and determine and to commit to uh, reading is important. It's gonna be important this year. I don't have time, so we don't have time. In our day, it is super hard to find just a little bit of time to allow our students to read. And if you're really struggling with this, Look at your own day. Look at what you're teaching and is there something that you can move and still squeeze in a little bit of independent reading time for our students? It's really hard to ask our students to read for 20 minutes a day when we can't give them any time in the classroom to read. If your warm-up time is to do a DOL or some kind of editing skill, maybe you can instead say, we're going to have five minutes of reading at the beginning of every class. Give it a try. Look at your own time audit for your class day and see if you can possibly squeeze in some time where your students can do some independent reading. And if you need help, I'm here. You can ask me. I will help you as much as I can. And remember that not just me, but you have your team, you have your school librarian, you have your public librarian. So ask for help. This is important. Ask the parents for help. This is really important for your students, as we saw in the beginning of why reading is important. We want to expose them to the new vocabulary and to really exercising their muscle of concentration while they read a story. So please keep trying. So if some one of these uh, nine add-ins doesn't work, try another one. Keep trying. Adjust, adapt, and adopt to what works for your classroom. Don't give up. Remember the goal. And even if your students aren't able to meet a challenge they set at the beginning of the school year, keep working at it. So what are some of your next steps? Look through the add-ins and see which ones work for you. In the documents for this class, they're note taker. You can go through there and just jot down, what would you like to try? What feels like it will work for you? Of course, you're gonna have your own, your own style, your own spin on it. What do you think would work for you? And what do you want your independent program, reading program to look like? Think about how you want your students to feel at the end of the year when they look back at the year of what books that they've read and their accomplishments. As I said before, I'm here to help and you can reach me through Just Add Students. The information is in the uh, materials that you download for this session and feel free to email me or check out my blog or look around at my Teacher Pay Teacher store. I, um, would, I would love to help you. So just let me know how I can do that. I hope you have a great rest of the conference and that you learn a lot in these few days and that you have great new ideas for the next year.